Hello. Hello. I'm so glad you're here today. Today, I have a retired Navy gentleman who is really special to me. And I know you're going to love this interview. Hi. Hi. I'm Jackie Cecil with JackieStrategist.com. And today I'm interviewing a really special guy guy. because Because. he's family. I'd like you to meet Tom Stringer. Hi, Tom. Hi, Hi, Jackie. Yay. (laughs) Now, Tom and I are cousins. Our dads were brothers. And Tom and I were born in the same year on the same day. Lucky Tom. <laughs> were we in the same hospital like our like like Jimmy and Danny and Lulu were? No, actually, actually I was born I was in California. California. Okay. Where were you Where born? Were you born? La Mesa. You know, you know I, I realize, realize that. that. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. fun? Okay, okay, so now tell them the story about uh, your, your little brother, brother and my little brother. Do you know, well, you know that story? I know that they were born, both born in La Mesa, and that uh, when they were born, that the nurses got your brother and my brother kind of mixed up and took them to the wrong mothers, but the mothers knew immediately that it wasn't the right baby. But since they both had the same last name and they were both in the same hospital, they did mix them up, but they got, them, got it corrected. Yeah, <laughs> both, both mothers had seen their babies beforehand, yeah. so that was sweet that, that they weren't. They weren't. And yet, they at the same time, twins and... and yeah. Your, your brother and me were all the same. They was just, I mean, that's I mean, just phenomenal. phenomenal. Odd. Odd. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, Tom, tell us what made you decide, decide to join the Navy? Well, the main reason uh, that I decided to join the Navy is like they always say, join the Navy, see the world. Well, I did that. It took me 23 years to do it. But the, uh, the main reason is I had, in college, I had started being ROTC, but it was Army ROTC at the time. And I took that for a semester and said, no, this is fine, but I don't think I really want to be in the Army. So I decided to stop. But also this was time, this was during Vietnam and I didn't have much of an option. And then, then they still had the draft going. And when I graduated from college, they said, you will be drafted either in June or July. So um, I graduated in, on May 24th and then I joined the Navy on June 1st because I did not want to go to the Army. That's who normally would draft me. So my options, I'd already had my physical and everything and was all ready to go into whatever they needed to, to do. I was, you know, I was saying, well, you, you can't skip this because my draft, they were drawing lottery numbers then too. My number was low. Uh, my, my brother's number was really high. His was in the 300s. Mine was in the, the 100s. And so anyway, so I, I was... I, was going to be drafted. So I said, well, I'll join the Navy instead. So I did. But my intention was that I had always planned on on teaching school. And so I graduated, but and I'd applied to several places. And then I said, well, okay, I'll just join the Navy. I'll be there for my required time. And then I'll get out and I'll teach school. So my plans, my my plans changed once I was in the Navy to do something different. uh, Because I was enlisted for, you know, when I joined, I was enlisted I didn't apply for a commission until many years later, but uh, I was total enlisted for seven years and then I was commissioned. So then anyway, so anyway, I decided while I was, I was a hospital corpsman when I first went in, which was one of the fields that uh, appealed to me because that's one had something to do with my degree. My first degree was in biology and it had something to do with that. So I said, well, I'll go to the hospital. I'll be a hospital corpsman. And that was a, a, a choice that few people made at that time because almost all hospital corpsmen were sent to Vietnam. I did not really, uh, it didn't bother me that much that that might happen, but as it was, every place I went, I, I never got sent to Vietnam. Even when I was going there once, they changed my orders right in the middle of the stream and I went, I went to San Diego instead to stay there for the next three years, which was, I guess, supposedly one of those things that, uh, so people feel they were blessed. Sometimes I feel I was blessed. Sometimes I feel I wasn't. But I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I ended up where I did. I liked my job. You know, anyway, I, total in the Navy, I spent 10 years in San Diego. And I think you can't beat that for a career in the, in the, in the Navy. Yeah, great. It was different commands, of course, over the years. Yeah, great. 
Now, when you said that's, that, 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 that's, that's why I joined the Navy. Ah. Now, when now, you when said your first degree, what are you doing? My, I have another degree in nursing. Uh, I have a Bachelor of Science in Nursing as well. And because right. while I was in the Navy, I decided, well, I think I'll be a nurse instead of a teacher. And okay. as it turns out, I've been both. So <laughs> <laughs> because I, I did teach at the Naval School of Health Sciences for three years in the Navy. Oh, uh -huh. excellent. excellent. I did not know that. You know, I, mean, I was going to nursing school, you know, because I had to take my nursing courses in addition to my course. So I've got like, you know, seven full years of college, you know, behind <laughs> me, you know, and, and two bachelor's degrees to show for that. But that's like, well, whatever. I'm, I'm pleased. I, I did what I wanted to do and I'm happy with what I've done. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's much more. I, I have a good retirement coming in and everything. So I'm, I'm happy. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, okay. Now, now I'm going to ask you. This question. this question, can you can remember you the, the first, first time you had, had um, you know, this intimacy with the Father, Father God, God that made you want, uh, you know, to go in deeper? I was always raised in a Christian home. Mother and Daddy were both Christians. I know that uh, uh, Daddy didn't always go to church with us, but he was, he had been baptized because I went to his baptism whenever he was, uh, you know, we lived in Taos. And that's also where I saw mother baptized as well. I know they had both been Christians for a very long time because they were both raised going to church as well. But like many people, they, they tend to, you go to church when you're little and when you get a little bit older, you don't go to church much more and then you start back maybe a little bit older. Well, I was always going to church. I can remember going to church as even before I started school. Uh, and I started school when I was five years old. So I, I can remember going to different churches with uh, my mother would always take us and we'd stay there for a, usually Sunday school and church both. And I've always done that. I've never, ever not been a time in my life when I didn't go to church. Uh, wherever we would move, uh, we would find it. My mother or daddy would, one would say, okay, let's go to church here. We'd go to church there. So I was saved when I was in the fourth grade. And uh, we had just moved from, from Taos, New Mexico to Tulane, Texas. And uh, we found it. My mother said, well, let's go to this Calvary Baptist church that was there in Tulia. And so we all went, and that's where I got saved, and I was baptized at Calvary Baptist Church in Tulia, Texas. And, but I was in the fourth grade at that time. And then after that, you know, when we moved back to Lamisa, we started going to the church there at the West Side Baptist Church. And then when that one kind of disassociated, and I was in, I was in college, I went to the First Baptist Church in Canyon when I was going to college there. And I, uh, you know, because my first two years in college, I lived with, with Aunt Bessie and Uncle Lloyd. And I lived with them because that's, they said, no, you can live with us. You could go to school in Canyon. So I said, well, why not? And yeah. Aunt, Aunt, Aunt Tynesy, Uncle Audie uh, provided my books and tuition for the first year. Oh. I said, well, uh, you can't beat that with a stick. So I said, well, okay. So I, I did that and I want, went to school at, at, then it was called West Texas State University. Now it's called West Texas A&M, but it was West Texas State University where I went and that's where my degree is from. <laughs> And anyway, I had planned on going to school either at uh, Sal Ross State University at that point in time or the University of Texas in Austin. And I'd been accepted to you know, those schools, but then I chose Canyon instead because of the living arrangements and the financial support that I had. Oh, yeah. I mean, we were very poor oh, yeah. growing up and I was, you know, I worked, I'd saved money. I could have done it on my own, but I, I, I had help and that, I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Of course. But anyway, I still went to church there, and that, and like I told you, I was there when I was in fourth grade, and I've continued to go to church since that time. When I first joined the Navy, I mean, we we still went to church. We didn't go every Sunday and every Wednesday like we do now, but we still went to church. And I was fortunate that when I married Maybell, she was also a Southern Baptist, just like myself, and so we didn't really have any conflicts. And she was raised in church the same way I was. And so we, we didn't have a problem selecting a church and what we felt like we needed to do. And over the years, we have done everything from uh, teaching high school students. And when we lived in San Diego at the first church we went to there. And then uh, later on, when we were here in where we live now, where I retired in Floresville, Texas, just outside of San Antonio, we, uh, we taught fifth grade for a while in Sunday school. And then we both taught RAs and GAs for about about three years total. Now we just kind of go to classes ourselves and, and do prayer meetings and that kind of thing like that with church. And now, 
tell me when you made your first mission trip. It was in, a, I think it was 1997. When I retired, I started working at the Air Force Hospital in San Antonio, and I heard some of the nurses talking about going on uh, a mission trip to Mexico. Well, a mission trip said, you know, I have known for quite some time that, you know, at, at that point in time, I mean, that, that at some point in time, mission trips was, was going to be one of the things that I should be doing. You know, like I just felt uh, that was my calling. I thought as many people as I could. And so uh, that's what I, in 1997, we started going or volunteering with a group called Time for Christ. Uh, it was called Mexico Ministries then because it was basically, it was a lot of, you know, it was not a military organization, but a lot of the people that participated were in the Air Force. And so while I was working for them and I said, well, that sounds like something I might like. And they said, okay, you can, here's how you apply. So I applied, they said, fine. And so I, since that time, the first time I went by myself and the second time uh, Mabel went with me. And then and we, we always went at Christmas time. So we started having our Christmases in, uh, in Mexico on a mission trip somewhere. And we didn't go to established hospitals or anything like that. We had actually a field hospital that would, that we carried down there with us. There was usually a group of about a hundred people. We had time for Christ had uh, a, like a Greyhound bus top thing that they converted into a pharmacy. They had a couple of trucks they carried things in. So we carried our all of our supplies down to Mexico in these big trucks and a bus and about nine nine passenger vans that we took down there with us to a school that they provided Mexico would, we had to go through a lot of paperwork to be able to do this. And we'd find a school, we'd set up a field hospital in a school. And my job was always working in the operating room, which is what I've, I've done since 1986. And uh, so I would help set up the operating rooms. We had field anesthesia machines. We had operating room tables that were meant to be mobile, just like you'd have in a regular military field hospital. And we had everything with us and we'd go down there, we'd set it up, we'd do surgery for usually around seven days and then we'd head back home. The mission trips lasted anywhere from, usually lasted about just shy of two weeks. And then we, then that included driving down there and driving back. And I was always one of the drivers of one of the vehicles uh, and just thought I was. And, and anyway, it was just do our thing and come back home. And what was the average, average number, number of surgery? surgery? You might have today. In the time frame that we were there, we would do a counting everything, probably close to 60 surgeries in the time frame that we were there because we didn't have set hours. We would start working in the morning sometime around eight o'clock, but we sometimes didn't finish that day until 10 o'clock at night. Uh, sometimes it was, if we, we tried to be done by five or six in the afternoon when it was time to eat and then we'd clean things up and get ready for the next day. But sometimes we work at 10 o'clock or later at night getting the schedule done for that day. And it's because um, we would do as many as we could because we wanted to help as many people as we could right. help. Now, they saw hundreds of patients in the clinics, you know, just to give them medications for one thing or another. But my specialty was surgery, which is what I said I've been doing since 1986. And so I always helped in surgery. And that included either, either being the one that gets the supplies for people being the one that's actually handing the instruments to the doctor or holding retractors or whatever it was yeah. that I did. So <laughs> then we did, we did that until about 2010. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after that, I volunteered with Refuge Internet and Refuge International, which is we go to Guatemala, but we go to established hospitals that they've had built down there. And I've been to a place called Sarstoon which is a very remote area of Guatemala, which is only accessible by boat. And, uh, and it's built on a swamp and it's a very interesting place to go, but you sleep in an open area under mosquito nets. You eat the same food that people eat because one of the ladies there cooks the food for us. We don't do quite as many surgeries. We don't, uh, because we don't have as many, we don't have as many surgeons participate as we did in, uh, with time for Christ in Mexico. Mm -hmm. But uh, with Time for Christ, also after 2010, when we quit going down there um, because of the drug cartel saying they were going to, they didn't want us there anymore. And then we were, they didn't like us. And so they said, they were going to start killing people if we came down. And since we took, we took kids with us as well as adults. And so since they said that, we said we couldn't risk taking children with us right. anymore. And so we stopped going there, but then we 
uh, got yeah the things that we would fly to. We've been to Guatemala once or twice, three, four times to Guatemala also to one of the hospitals in San Ramundo with Time for Christ. And then we've also been to uh, to Haiti and India as as well as Honduras with with Time for Christ as well. Wow. When Maybell goes, when she was in Time for Christ, she would work. She's the one that organized the kitchen help, and she's the one that prepared our meals for us. And it was a she had a bigger chore than I did, and she worked longer hours than I did getting things ready for her, you know, keeping making sure our food was safe and we were well fed. Wow, it was very interesting. Oh, it was wow. a very, and it also made you feel so good because the people were so thankful that we were there helping them. We went to very remote areas, and I'm I'm talking you you were. In, up in the boonies and, and it would be a very small village but when we would get there people from all over would be standing in line i'm talking hundreds of people standing in line waiting for us to get there so we could help them and now tell me the, the biggest success story that happened while you were there you know in any of the trips that you felt like was the biggest success story well, a lot of the success story, the older women that I don't know if I should, should say some things like this, but a lot of the women there don't have a lot of health care to begin with. A lot of them have had multiple pregnancies. A lot of them have had very hard, they worked very hard. I had never seen like a prolapsed uterus until we got down there. And a lot of the women have a prolapsed uterus that are usually, usually older women, you know, maybe their 60s or 70s. And, and, and I don't know if you know how that is, but it's something very bad and we could we could help them by because they were beyond childbearing age of course and they we would do hysterectomies on these ladies and that would fix that problem but if you can imagine a woman with a prolapsed uterus and it's literally hanging out between their legs oh. and it's like uh, well we helped them and they were all very thankful when they left they were looking normal again and feeling much better because they didn't have this problem to worry with now, I also work with Mercy Ships. I volunteer with them, and they have a hospital ship that's a regular, a regular hospital ship. It's called the Africa Mercy right now, yeah. and I work with them. And when I work there, I've helped fix, say, cleft palates for one thing, and I've uh, mainly done cataract surgery and oh helping with that. And when you witness a person that is blind when they come in to see you and they leave being able to see, that is just incredible. It makes you feel, and of course, they're very thankful as well. Yes, that's an awesome, an awesome um, retirement. I, I don't know many people who work that hard in, hard in retirement. You know, one of the things some people think about missions, oh, I get to go on a mission trip. Well, they don't realize the, the cost of a mission trip, how much it costs you to go, because every trip you take, you have to, you have to make a donation to the organization of some kind, which usually helps pay for your, your stay there, and, and you have to pay for your transportation. And uh, Time for Christ, usually since we drove, it was pretty inexpensive. But when you think about having to fly to um, to India or fly to Africa, oh, and, yeah. I mean, you're talking uh, a major cost that you foot the bill for all of these things. A lot of people say, oh, I'll go on a mission trip. But when you tell them how much it's going to cost, they say, well, we can't do that. But one of the things that, that I say I've been blessed with is I have, a, we've been able to save the money to, we can fund ourselves and we don't have a problem with that. We may not have the, you know, we have everything we want. We have everything. We don't have everything we want, but we have everything that we need. And we've been blessed by that. And if we want to do something, we can afford to do it. You know, Maybell and I have traveled the world since I've been retired and partly when I've been retired, before I retired in the Navy as well. We got, we're fortunate enough to live in Japan for almost three years and in Italy for a year. And so we we love that and we love to travel. So when I retired, our our first major trip was back to Africa was to Africa for a tour of Egypt where we saw all the pyramids, we saw all the things in Egypt that you're supposed to see. And that was when Egypt and Israel were getting along very well. And so we saw everything that was our 25th anniversary. Oh, and a great our, anniversary, you know, and our that was our present to ourselves. So we so we took the Egyptian tour along. We took Quentin with us as well, so we could experience something like that as well. Then for our fiftieth this year, we were going to take the Scandinavian cruise and see like eight different countries, including Russia. 
uh, on the cruise, but it was canceled because of COVID. So instead we took a, a road trip to, uh, <laughs> to Mount Rushmore and saw all the things up there. So it, was, it was a good trip. Yeah, exactly. Not, not one place. Like our, our Scandinavian cruise was going to be, but it was still very worthwhile. <laughs> Um, it, you know, there are many people in our, the Stringer family, that have such uh, philanthropic uh, desires to help other people uh, financially, emotionally, physically, spiritually. Do you remember about mm, seven or eight years ago, we had a cousin's dinner in San Antonio and all these cousins came in? Do you remember that time? I do. You and you're. you're and, and Beth, Beth and Charlotte, and they were, all of us were there. That's right. So as we're sitting there in that circle, I, I mean, in that big, U, they had the tables all set in like a large U. And I'm looking at it and I began to count the stringers. And then I began to count or look at what their vocations were. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there at the table almost crying because there were nurses, um, um school teachers, you, you know, every, uh, me, I was working as a life coach, you know, all of these things, it, that there was a generational blessing on our family, where we understood that, yes, we did have poverty in our background, but as a whole, we managed to still take care of ourselves, get educations, and still give out to the other people. That was, that was for me, a huge blessing. It was a, such a, a beautiful blessing to see so many of us giving out to others. And th that is true. We have been blessed. Yeah, we have been. We All have of been. our lives. I mean, I said, you know, we were poor, but we never went hungry. We never lacked for anything. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. Do you have any regrets in your life? I don't think I have any regrets in my life that I can think of right now. I mean, I, you know, I haven't always gotten everything I've wanted, but I've always gotten everything I needed. That's an excellent attitude. Excellent. Yeah, um, I mean, I've been happy. You know, I think one of the greatest, one of the greatest things I've done was, was marry my wife, you know, Without her, I couldn't have done all these things. Uh, she has been more of a blessing than just a magic. Oh, she has been so supportive of everything I've wanted to do and everything that she wanted to do. You know, we she's been supportive of me in everything I do, and I'm I'm really grateful for that. Wow, that's a sweet thing to say. That that's awesome. Um, do you have any questions you want to ask me? Um. I don't really have a lot of questions left to ask about anything. And uh, I'm just thankful you're doing this. I mean, it, I think it, it feels good to talk with, with you. You know, we, we've always kept up with each other, not really closely for, because we've both been in the opposite sides of the world. Mary, it's and the truth. You do. And now we're relatively close and we still see each other periodically. Uh, for the audience, um, because I grew up calling him Tommy, it's hard for me to remember that he's a, He's a grown man now. So, Tom, I'm so honored that you shared some of your background, some of the things you've been through. It's kind of you to do that because I've never wanted this channel just to be my voice. I think there are thousands of Christians out there who have exciting stories. Your story is exciting. All the places you've been, all the ways you've given back to God that's a blessing to, to the, to the world. And I want to thank you for that. I, I really mean it. You know, when we were living overseas, we still went to church, even though, even in Italy and Japan, we, we went, uh, we had missionaries that were our pastors there and it was like, okay, it was, we always enjoyed that. So. Excellent. It's always been part of our life. Excellent. Um, you know, Tom, I, I have, enough knowledge to know that being part of your life, that being part of your life was a choice. And I'm impressed that day after day, year after year, you made that kind of choice. Thank you for that. Thank you for this interview. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm going to see you soon. 
Goodbye. Okay.